variable frequency drives. In this presentation, we're going to be looking at why VFDs are needed, how VFDs control motor speed, the sections inside a VFD, inverter output types, reasons for VFD use, and finally, special considerations and equipment when working with variable frequency drives. There are two factors that control AC motor speed when it's driving a load. The first one is stator hertz. The second is the stator voltage, or the line voltage that's applied to a three-phase motor. Now, stator hertz is one that we can easily understand based on the synchronous speed calculation shown here. We know the rotor is going to turn slightly slower than the synchronous speed based on the percent slip and the amount of load applied. The stator voltage will also lower the motor speed if it is driving a load. But there's a problem. If the stator supply hertz is decreased, the motor RPM will decrease. Excellent. However, the stator current will increase and the torque developed will decrease. So both those are kind of seen as bad. And the reason for this is that the inductive reactance of the windings in the motor will drop because of the supply frequency going down. This will result in a lower overall impedance and due to Ohm's law, more current will be drawn. If the stator supply voltage is decreased, the motor RPM will decrease as well. Great. However, exactly the same problems, the stator current will go up and the torque developed will decrease. In effect, the motor will operate as though it's overloaded and draw more current for the same load. To control AC motor speed and torque effectively, the volts and the hertz must be adjusted at the same time. This VF, or voltage frequency ratio, must be maintained at all speeds. And so what we see is uh, different types of graphs and diagrams that illustrate the relationship between what the VFD is providing to the motor. It is adjusting the voltage at exactly the same time that it is adjusting the frequency. And this way we can get a very linear line of speed for the motor that I can adjust when I need different uh, speeds above or below what the motor rating is. At low hertz and low voltage, the motor will turn at a low RPM. At high hertz and high voltage, the motor turns at a high speed. Motors can even be run higher than their rated RPM. However, torque will begin to drop off or decrease. In this way, a VFD takes the nominal 60 hertz that we get from our three-phase supply and provides three phase out to the motor anywhere from zero to around 70 hertz. But of course, there's always specialty applications. This is more just general what we would tend to see. Motors supplied by VFDs draw rated FLA for all speeds when they're driving rated torque, which is rather interesting. That means that we could be running the motor at very low speed, driving its full rated torque, or at three quarter speed or full speed. At each one of the speeds, the current drawn should be approximately equivalent to the motor nameplate FLA. Motors supplied by VFDs also will have full load rated torque at different speeds. This again is advantageous because it means that I'm able to drive the rated full load torque at various speeds. Whereas on a typical reduced mechanical voltage starter, when we start the, the, uh, the assembly going, we have a significant reduction in torque. If I use a VFD, I can very accurately control exactly how much torque is being delivered at every speed. A variable frequency drive has full-time control over line voltage, frequency, and phase rotation supplying a three-phase motor. Although it has push buttons on the front typically and a rotary dial to indicate and to set the speed of the motor, often a separate uh, push button station is utilized or further controls. A variable frequency drive provides acceleration control, deceleration control, running speed control, reversing, overload protection, and the ability to connect into larger digital control systems such as PLCs.
The sections of a variable frequency drive are separated into three. Some VFDs are designed in order to take and supply voltage of single phase and drive it three phase AC motor. In these situations, it's advantageous to have such a device if we're trying to run three phase woodworking equipment at perhaps a residential acreage where only single phase is provided. Inside of EFD, we have a rectifying circuit which converts the incoming AC to DC. We then have what's called a DC link. And this is simply just the DC bus or bus bar system inside the VFD where the DC voltage is filtered. Then the third section is the inverter section, which converts the DC to AC at whatever voltage value and frequency is required. If we take a look at a more detailed diagram, we can see here fixed voltage and fixed fre frequency three phase from the utility. We have a rectifier, and we know that the rectifier won't produce perfect DC, but it's more of a pulsating or bumping DC. We then have a filter. The filter in this case is an inductor and a capacitor, and this helps to smooth the DC. On this side, we then have a clean, smooth DC voltage, and it is then sent through an inverter, which converts the DC to AC voltage. And now going to the motor, we have a variable voltage and a variable frequency or frequency. Inverters convert DC voltage to AC voltage and they're done with a number of different types of electronic devices. Essentially, if we were to simplify the process, an inverter section is a series of six switches. Depending on which two switches are closed at any given moment means that we will have that particular line energized. Now, we'll take a look at different types of inverter outputs in a moment, because as we're looking at this, it seems rather odd. How can I get AC out? All we're looking at is basic switches from a DC bus. Inverters can be constructed with any of the below types of controllable thyristors. And so all of these have different gate controls that will allow them to turn on and conduct and turn off or commutate so that we get small bursts or long bursts of DC voltage coming out. There are three common inverter output types, variable voltage inversion, VVI, current source inversion, CSI, and pulse width modulation, PWM. Their waveforms look like this. Now I've even included on the far left-hand side a square wave, which is something we find with crappy Canadian tire type inverters, really basic. And what you can see is that none of them really look like a sine wave, do they? They basically look like a sine wave, I suppose, if you sort of squint your eyes and turn your head sideways. But realistically, they all look like, well, grade school drawings of a sine wave. Over here, square wave is simply a long burst of DC in the positive and then a long burst of DC in the negative. And this is what simulates very poorly a sine wave. VVI and CSI inverters are referred to as six step. And that's because the voltage that is applied out of the inverter is in six steps. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. And it goes down on the negative and up on the positive, down on the negative, up on the positive. PWM is actually the best AC sine wave that is generated. And it looks a little bit bizarre. And we'll take a few moments to sort of investigate that further to see what exactly is happening with it. So out of all these inverter output waveforms, it's important to understand that no inverter AC, quote unquote, output will ever be as smooth as a true alternator waveform. Let's take a look at variable voltage and current source inverters. Now, VVI and CSI use a fully controllable DC rectifier. And what they do is on the inverter side, they let flow different values of DC voltage to make up the six steps. 
In this way, we have six steps of voltage for each alternation. In a VVI and CSI inverter, there are long durations of DC voltage on. The magnitude of the DC voltage changes for each step. And it requires a fully controlled rectifier section in order to get these different DC voltages. Generally though, it's considered to be a poor sine wave generation compared to the other type we're going to look at. For high motor RPM, we see that we have a high voltage. And if we look at the frequency, the rate of positive alternations and negative alternations on the left is quite a bit higher than on the right. Low motor, motor RPM, where we have lower voltages and lower spreading out of those positive and negative alternations. So high motor RPM, means we have a higher frequency, higher DC voltages, and shorter voltage steps. On the low motor RPM, we have a lower frequency, lower DC voltages, and longer voltage steps. Pulse width modulation inverters are the preferred type of inverter in VFDs currently. They utilize a standard DC rectifier, which gives a standard static uh, DC voltage that is then sent out to the inverter. PWM inverters are unique in that they use only a single voltage and they try to fool the system. They allow a single DC voltage pulse at an incredibly short duration of time to be present on the line. Depending on the ratio of on time to off time, the overall voltage starts to appear or approach that of a standard sine wave. So we can see here that the current value, which is in red, will look more like a sine wave because of the voltage values that are shown in green. As I increase the time that the voltage is present, I start to replicate that of a standard sine wave. And when it's applied to a load, the current that flows tends to be more fluid and curved or gradual. What it would actually look like on an oscilloscope, depending on what brand and how accurate it is, would be something like this lower line current. So the current is sort of fuzzy and we can sort of see it replicates uh, not perfectly, but uh, fairly close to a sine wave, while the actual voltage sine wave looks absolutely bizarre. It is individual bursts of the same voltage in either a positive or a negative polarity. High motor RPM versus low motor RPM. Again, we have the full 810 volt DC for every single one of these pulses. For high motor RPM, we have a higher frequency, higher DC voltage pulses, as in uh, the length of them, and, or sorry, high DC voltage pulses, longer pulse on, shorter pulse off. For low motor RPM, we have a lower frequency, Again, exactly the same high DC voltage pulse, 810 volts, shorter pulse on, longer pulse off. So PWM inverters use short pulses of DC voltage on and off. The magnitude of DC voltage does not change. It uses a standard uncontrolled rectifier section and it provides the best sine wave generation. There's a number of reasons that we would want to use VFDs other than just the basic, I wanna control the speed. First off, we can reduce the inrush current starting without sacrificing substantially the torque. We can do speed adjustment without sacrificing the torque. We can do braking and slowing of the motor. We can reverse the motor rotation without a reversing magnetic starter. And more importantly, 
there are significant cost savings to reduced energy use when a motor is driven at lower than rated speeds. This is often an infographic that is shown with different types of HVAC literature. In the HVAC world, lots of motors, pumps, and fans are driven for continuous amounts of time. The longer it runs, the more energy it takes. If, however, we can run it at a slightly lower speed and not vastly affect the overall flow rate of the amount of fluid that's moved by a pump, we can see massive reductions in the amount of energy. So look at this graph. Power varies to the cube of the speed change. Hmm. What that means is that for a 20% reduction in speed, you're actually saving or you have a reduction of 50% in energy. That's crazy. Now, obviously you're pumping less, right? You're pumping some amount of water less. However, the reduction in the actual cost is incredible. If you were to go down to 50% reduction in speed, you see an 80% reduction in energy. So utilizing a VFD may not simply be because, oh, I wanna run a motor at a higher or lower RPM for a particular control process, but it could purely be for the reason that I can run the motor or the pump at 20% reduced speed, not affect the overall operation of the hydraulic system, and achieve a 50% reduction in the amount of energy that the motor uses. This is simply just another infographic showing the percent of rated load and drive efficiency, showing how variable frequency drive efficiency uh, can be utilized to get more gains and reduction of overall energy consumption. Not every three-phase motor is designed to be supplied from a VFD, although in the field I appreciate many people install VFDs on any motor and depending on the application, if the motor lasts for 10 years is not really of much concern. Motors must be rated for use with VFDs or inverters and often that is stated on the nameplate itself in the words inverter duty or VFD duty. Other times we have somewhat more cryptic interpretations. This motor from Baldor actually shows at the very bottom that it has CT 10 to 1. Now on another place of this particular motor, there is actually another stamp or sticker that shows its inverter duty, but on the actual nameplate, the 10 to 1 is telling me that the motor can turn a constant torque load based on a ratio of 10 to 1 speed from a VFD. In plain English, it means the motor can be driven at one tenth its rated speed while turning its rated horsepower of a constant torque load, something like a fan or a pump. Now due to the high speed switching of pulse width modulation, VFDs create substantial harmonic disturbances. And harmonics are simply pulsating shock waves that are sent down the, the current carrying conductors and tend to lead to over voltage uh, arcing as well as over current types of situations and disturbances with electronic equipment. This can affect upstream equipment from the VFD and it can also damage the motors if they're not rated for VFD use. Motor stator insulation can quickly break down and we can have premature bearing failure. The stator winding insulation breakdown is where the varnish starts to separate from the motor winding conductors. And that's due to the harmonics which introduce very high spikes of voltages at times. The other problem is bearing surface damage. And that's because the high voltages that are induced into different sections of the motor assembly uh, can arc across the metal bearing fixtures. And so on some types of motors, they will choose to use ceramic bearings that are non-conductive or other types of assemblies that prevent this fluting, which could be a sign of bearing damage. And this is where arcing has taken place between the bearing ball itself 
and the actual cup of where the ball rolls. Systems like this can be introduced onto motors to equalize the voltage potential between the shaft of the motor and the frame of the motor. Typically, there is no actual electrical connection that we intentionally make here, but this, when used with VFDs, can start to develop voltages on the rotor which arc through the bearings. This type of equipment is actually a conductive brush that uh, actually rests or brushes up against the shaft of the motor. And since it's conductive and it's bolted to the frame, it equalizes any voltage difference that we see between the rotor and frame assembly. When we're installing VFDs, often the engineer will specify or spec a higher grade of tech cable. Now, tech cable is the standard for any sort of field or industrial type of motor control application. But specifically, when we're working with VFD supplied motors, this special cable will have additional bonding conductors to help reduce the effects of the harmonics, as well as some braided shielding. Another item that we can have, which will help to prevent or reduce the progress of harmonics upstream from the VFD, is to put in three-phase reactors. Now, a reactor is simply a low resistive and XL coil that helps to smooth the pulse width modulation output of a VFD. There's one coil for each line conductor, and the units can be installed on either the load or the line side of the VFD. And we can see them in this diagram installed on both sides. This being the absolute best practice to ensure that we reduce the harmonics and any sort of destructive forces that may be introduced onto the motor with the load reactors. And on the line side, try to prevent the harmonics from progressing upstream to the main power bus where perhaps it could interact and interfere with other types of electronic equipment at the site.